see the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Brian, and today is Monday, April 8th, 2024, and this is episode 671 of the Lots Project podcast titled SRF Spring 24 Recap, and I'll be chatting about the highlights from SRF TikTok news and, of course, the end of the world, also known as the eclipse, a little later today. Hope everything is going good. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Let's check out who's in the live chat. Grab a cup of coffee, see, and uh, hang out for about an hour, guys. And it's going to be a rough one. It is going to be a rough one for sure. It was a long, long weekend, and I am exhausted. And Corey is (laughs) exhausted. We both looked at each other when we got up this morning and was like, yeah, I want to go back to bed. But here we are. Here we are, folks. Good morning. I hope everything is well. Uh, Let's see who's hanging out. Pip in early. And uh, everybody know what day it is. Rex Manning Day. (laughs) Jim. Jim is... uh, Can't be here for the chat, but he'll be listening. Good morning, Jim. I'm sorry you can't be here for the chat, but thank you for listening regardless. I appreciate it. And all the support over on Noster. Thank you very much. Canadian Farmsteads driving, so I suppose he's not going to be commenting. Hunter, good morning. Good morning. Hopefully everything over on Twitch is uh, is flowing all right and uh, it's not too lonely. Pip, again, Pip checking in again. Um, Heading to the junkyard today. Heading to the junkyard. You're gonna you going to hang out in the junkyard for the for the eclipse or just stopping in for some parts. Good morning, Gen G. Thanks for stopping. Mike's homestead. Hey, how we doing this morning? Oh man, I need some coffee, guys. Hold on a second. Oh, pickle Pete. Good morning, pickle Pete. You're not too late. I would uh I wouldn't say you're late, Pete. I would just say you're a little tardy. Oh, what is in the cup today? It really doesn't matter what's in the cup today, I'll tell you. And I'll tell you that's for sure because Food Forest Farms, when Brian sends me out a bag of coffee, it's good regardless. And uh, man, today, today, I don't know. I might be able to chug down some uh, less than ideal coffee if I had to, just because I need these eyeballs to open up and uh, get the brain juices flowing. But today we got uh, Light Colombian. We have Hectar. Hector again, Hector up in the claw in the cupboard. Hector the light Colombian. It's good. It's good. I'm going to. Uh, I'll probably be through this French press before the end of the show today for sure. Because, like I said, need the toothpicks to hold them open. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Pip says uh, he's got a few parts to pick up for his daily driver. And a few picks for a caravan. Oh yeah, I saw you guys having uh, having caravan troubleshooting uh, time in Toolman Tim's chat. And dude, that is a pretty solid thing uh, to go out and take pictures uh, to help people troubleshoot, do a little shade tree mechanic, and avoid that uh, that that huge garage fee that you get when you uh, when you have somebody else do it for you. But appreciate that, man. You uh, that's a that's a pretty solid thing to do. Um, yeah, so pretty much the show today, I didn't do a ton of prep. We, uh, we were all, um, Corey and I were gone pretty much all weekend. Um, we, uh, I guess you would call it commute to SRF. It's about an hour and 15 minutes away. Um, <laughs> uh, about an hour and 15 minutes away, one way. Uh, and yeah, we, we get up, we have to get up and, uh, we take the dogs for like a half hour walk, 15 minute, half hour, hour. I don't know how long it takes, but we get up at, um, earlier than we do on normal weekdays. And, um, yeah, <laughs> it was a long weekend. It was a long weekend. Drive up there, walk the dogs, drive up there, hang out all day. Uh, we got there be- little after seven between seven and the morning every day both days and um man the first day 
we got home earlier than normal. We learned, we keep learning, which is good. We keep, uh, we keep evolving, I guess. But we, uh, we learned that sticking around later, um, just makes the day, um, just makes the day, the following day, less enjoyable. Because at least we got out of there at a decent time. Because then we still have to come home and feed the dogs, walk the dogs again, give them another uh, another half hour, hour walk, and then uh, dive back into bed and uh, and do it again the next day. But it wasn't bad. I mean, it was definitely worth it. We'll talk about it today. I, I'm not saying that I wouldn't do it. I continue to do it, so it must be worth it. And man, I'll just be a little tired today and, and catch back up tonight. And tomorrow we should be back to gold. Pickle Pete says he needs two uh two GSD blend um or two lot. I don't know what that. I'm guessing he's uh he says they need two French presses to battle the Giants, maybe three. I am gonna be off my game today, guys. If the Giants roll out, I might need uh I might need some assistance for sure. I don't know. Maybe the adrenaline of seeing a giant and having to do battle would uh would tingle my spidey senses and i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't be this tired so fingers crossed for that and pickle pete also says imagine if you had to do that both ways to a shit ass job in a giant city i did i did uh when we moved to our farm in in minnesota i traveled um 90 miles is it 90 miles i think it's just under 90 miles was it 90 miles to you or was it 90 miles to me car Yeah. Yeah. About 90 miles one way. It was, uh, and then I worked 12 to 14 hour days. So yeah, I did exactly what we did. Actually, I drove further to go to the fuck shit ass job. Um, but it paid for uh, getting to the farm and, and that's, that was the end goal. You know, the, the means the the ends justify the mean some points. Um, anyway, that's our, uh, Uh, the smaller smaller gathering uh than fall uh traditionally from talking to people we've been to so the first one we went to was actually a spring uh eh, I, it was more a summer actually it i believe it was in june it, Instead of um, instead of two a year, instead of having April and October, at that point they were having February, June, and October, and um, it was smaller. I think the fall the fall one is really the 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 main one of the year, in my opinion, uh, just from from observation, and and it's growing every year. It feels like. But uh, it feels like, like uh, fall is the better time. Fall is the bigger event. And I think that's going to be the case this year. Uh, speakers at this one were fantastic. Everybody that I ran into, everybody that I talked to was great. Uh, but it also sounds like a fall speaker lineup is also a little more uh, robust, I would say. I don't want to diminish anybody. Everybody did a fantastic job in the, in the, in the information that was presented was more than valuable. But um, the big draw names, I guess, is what is what I'm saying. I, I, I don't think a name really makes the presentation by any means. I met some fantastic people that I had never heard of. Oh, Pip Wonders, how's the interview turned out? I'll interview booth turned out. I'll uh, I'll get to that for sure. <coughs> uh, I don't necessarily need to know of someone to like i don't care who you are as long as your information solid as long as your presentation solid your delivery uh it doesn't matter who you are and i met some fantastic people i'd never heard of and um man i'm checking their stuff out now uh because it's fantastic it's fantastic so and i'll uh, i'll talk about more of those later as i get a list of them i don't want to miss anybody i don't want to i don't want to um, leave anybody out that uh, that i really that I re resonated to. I did take some notes and uh, I'll be following up with my stuff and, uh, and, and the stuff I watch here and listen to moving forward or check out. Um, yeah, I might as well do 
interview booth first. Uh, I was tasked, I guess not tasked. I, uh, I, I worked with Nicole. We, um, she asked if I would run the content creator tent. And if you've never been to SRF, um, the content creator tent was kind of a new development in the last, the last one or the, the one prior to that two ago, I think it was last one, but basically they have, um, a nice enclosed tent think of a think of a circus tent for uh, like a wedding reception with the sides on it and the doors it was kind of a mini version of that um hey backwoods butcher happy birthday good morning sir happy birthday hope everything is going great on your special day everybody wish <laughs> wish uh, backwood butcher a happy birthday here in the comments if you would would you turn like 27 today 24 or something like that What'd you do? Fire the generator up so you could watch the show on your uh, on your computer or your phone because you, uh, you're still out of power, aren't you? <coughs> anyway, it's um. <laughs> Mike's homestead says for someone with a week weekday job and a homestead or even large garden, this time is hard. Lots going on with that stuff. Yeah, for you guys in this area, um. Like Minnesota right now, you were still Minnesota was uh let's see, so that would be two, 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 two six weeks away. Six weeks away from uh from final frost date. So there's a lot going on, but there's a there was a distinct possibility that the the first week of April in Minnesota there was uh there'd be like four feet of snow still on the ground. So I don't know. I don't know. Um it all depends. Our our tough one, like I always noticed it when we had our homestead. I always wanted to go to Homesteaders of America. That was that was uh, prior to me knowing. I don't. It was prior to prior to me actually knowing what SRF was, or I don't even think SRF was in existence at that point. If I do the math, yeah, no. Um, so Homesteaders of America was kind of the target thing that I always wanted to go to, and it was impossible. Um, the rush at the end of the season for making it to something like that, especially four or five states away, um, when you have winter and six or eight months of winter bearing down on you, and uh, it could start snowing at any time. And I'm pretty sure that one's in October or September, October, November. Ain't happening. If I got, if I have four days of not blizzard. Um, that time of year in Minnesota, I better be like getting stuff inside because the next day it could be buried until May. So it's kind of the opposite up there. And I think it all rolls with your growing seasons and things like that. But yeah, spring is tough. It is tough here. It's tough. Um, everybody's kind of popping and things are starting to grow. People are getting excited to get out in the garden. So I, it was a different vibe, um, different vibe there too. It was weird. Uh, I don't want to say weird. It was nice. It was very kind of laid back, relaxed, and um, people. Other people mentioned it. It wasn't just uh, wasn't just me being crazy. Uh, several people that I talked to mentioned that it was just more of a laid back, um, laid back vibe. And I think everybody had an awesome time, and there was a ton of networking connections and uh, information passed. Huh. We got thunderstorms going through the today, guys. I guess it's supposed to rain all week, um, like all. People asked me to do a content creator tent. Basically, it was like an enclosed tent. I would say it was probably 12 by um, 8 by 12, maybe. 8 by 16, something like that. Uh, enclosed tent, uh, uh, see-through, like the, the thin see-through plastic windows in it, like all, all one piece. And then they supplied, uh, I believe it was probably John's furniture and carpet and stuff, but the, they had, um, they had like a nice carpet down. They had chairs and couches, tables. If you had been at the, at SRF in the, in the fall, (coughs) 
sorry guys, my throat's all dry. It, it, it was a lot of talking this weekend for sure. Um, the, it was all set. It was set up great. If you were there in the fall, you saw it. Um, it was set up there. Very similar. So Nicole asked me to kind of make it happen. <laughs> It was the casting couch SRF edition. Right, right, for sure. Uh, it was kind of a make it happen, uh, do what you want with it, figure it out, uh, because no one used it last time. Well, I think one person used it last time, but nobody knew what it was. It was kind of tucked away in a corner. Um, Nicole and I bounced back, I bounced back ideas back and forth for a while, and uh, we got the tent moved. Tim and I uh, split a vendor tent. We set we were set up right next to it, so uh, to answer questions, and we were going to have a podcast setup rig. We were going to record interviews with some of the, or give give uh, attendees the opportunity to record um, short interviews with some of the the headliners and some of the presenters, and then have an open space for content creators if they're there to grab people and use it to do interviews one-on-one uh, -on -one or whatever. And then get all that on memory and pass it out or um, distribute it to a, a drive later for whoever participated to use it. Um, so I kind of planned it. It was really loose. We were going to, um, we were going to kind of play it by ear, had a rough schedule. Didn't really know which of the, which of the presenters were all in. I knew Tim was, I had a couple confirmations from, uh, like angry American and some other people were willing to be on the list to get, uh, to get interviewed by random people. And, um, so that was good. We we were really, I was really comfortable with the fact we we're just going to kind of go with it and see how it went. First time, um, first time really anybody taking the reins of it and wanted to feel it out. I knew that the, the, the um, I knew the event was going to be a little smaller. I knew the, um, I knew the, let me see. it was going to be hard to promote because we didn't really know who was going to a be willing to be on the interview side and b who was really going to want to interview e we didn't uh we we weren't able to kind of like promote it a lot before the event we we're going to do a lot of on-site promotion well regardless i show up on uh on saturday morning nicole immediately comes over and she's like hey uh, i got a problem I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Just rolling with it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, the person that um, was supposed to bring the audio gear for the tent uh, either didn't, got wires crossed, uh, forgot it, wasn't there. I don't remember. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't have a connection with the person that was bringing it. I, it was just a, a first name. And I was like, okay, cool. We'll, uh, we'll figure out how to use it when we're there. So we didn't have any audio equipment. We had the tent set up there. And so I was like, all right, we'll just roll with it. I'll figure something out. And so Saturday, we really didn't do a whole lot. I hung up a sign-up sheet. People wanted to connect. Um, didn't do a whole lot. It, um, it, it it didn't gain very much traction. Couple of announcements at the on the stages by the, the MCs. Some people walked by, they kind of looked and and things like that. Toolman Tim used it to uh, record a few interviews with people. He's always he's always hustling for interviews at these events. It's fantastic to watch and he gets some great stuff. If you're interested in catching Tim's um, Tim's interviews that he does, he actually releases them in a special series on Patreon. So if you're not a member of Tim's Patreon, uh, definitely check that out if you want to grab these interviews. I was actually sitting behind the wall for them. And it was only a tent, so I might have been peeking in and listening. Um, and man, the guy Tim Tim is a fantastic interviewer. If you haven't listened to Tim's interviews, um, you really should. Whether it's the the ones on his channel or the ones on his Patreon, he he does a phenomenal job. His background is well ta tailored for that. If you don't know his story, you can go check it out. He'll uh, he'll tell you if you want why. Ask him why. He he's good interviewer and see what he says. Cause I don't know what he'll answer, but I know, I know in my heart after getting to know him for the last six or seven years, 
why he uh is it been that long holy shit five or six years probably after getting to know him for quite a while um i have an opinion why he's a really good interviewer and i'm curious what his thoughts are but i don't think i could ask him because he'd know i was digging for something but he is a phenomenal interviewer and he had some he had some bangers there so uh man five bucks a month i think over on his patreon probably worth it probably worth these interviews that i even just overheard were probably worth the five bucks a month plus he uh plus he just stacks them the guy the guy is um he's relentless when he has somebody on his list to get interviewed he he takes care of it so tim uh tim used it quite a bit on saturday a lot of people were kind of poking around like what is this what is this this is basically an open tent with no recording gear or cameras or anything in there it was just looks like a lounge which i mean they were nice days. The weather was fantastic, so there was no need to really bump in there or anything. But anyway, at the end of the day, we went home and I, I just brainstormed. I was like, okay, what can we do with this to make it at least fruitful for the event? Um, Saturday was kind of a, a bust other than Tim and I who knew what was going on. And so Corey and I came up with the idea of... Um, me grabbing attendees, vendors, speakers, and kind of doing a, a quick hit five minute interview, uh, basically the same questions, uh, SRF related questions, like, is this your first event? Uh, what did you expect to see? Uh, what are your, what are your uh, thoughts so far halfway through? Cause I was doing this on Sunday afternoon. And so I think I, I got seven, I think I grabbed seven people and actually utilized the tent for that. Tim utilized it uh, a bunch more for uh, doing more interviews. I think Tim ended up doing four or five or six um, solo interviews there in the tent. I got seven done. So I think it was well, it was used uh, way more than it was last year. But I think um, with the six months to plan to get there, next fall will be great. Kyle says, I'll help you dial it in in the fall. Yeah, I, I think I think with um, a little bit more confirmation on things, I guess, and a little bit more willingness for me to say, OK, this is how it's going to go and get it out there prior to the event and uh, let people know, hey, bring bring some recording gear, or bring some questions to ask your favorite, uh, ask your favorite uh, content creator, speaker, whoever uh and we'll have signups it'll get there it'll get there but it went well i was excited to do the the interviews and uh that i and and i'll probably splice internet's going to be uh is i wonder if the leaves are coming in enough now that uh we're gonna have our summer problems I'll end up having to move the move the dish to make sure that this doesn't happen, but uh, or it could be the thunderstorms. It's it's pretty it's pretty uh, up in the air at the moment, which is which. So we will see. Um, Hunter said, "Is the tent more for newbies?" I think the tent is for anybody, really. Um, we were trying to Corey and I were bouncing back and forth, like who the target is for it. And I think it's like everybody, we were, um, A, yeah, there's going to be open spots there for, for newbies to kind of get together and uh, have a, have a, um, uh, enclose. It's the eclipse. John, John Palmer. Yeah, I'm guessing it's not, but maybe, maybe it's, it's starting early. <laughs> Is the eclipse starting early? Uh, basically, the intent for me was, let's give a space for people because i've been there and i've been like hey um hey i would really like to interview this person i'd like to grab grab them people are so accessible at srf you can like grab them and be like hey um you want to go just chat for 10 minutes but i watched him do it tim will walk behind a, a, a shipping container he'll walk behind the porta potty he'll duck into uh wherever to do an interview. I think a lot of people that um, 
that makes them nervous. Like I don't have the proper area. It's too loud. It's too windy, blah, 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 this or that. I think this gives them a space that they can go. That's it's kind of um, it's not soundproof. Uh, you can hear outside it's a tent, uh, but the the noise is great, greatly reduced. I don't think you'll be able to tell you were at a um, at a festival by any means. And um, also having the equipment there, it, it, I think it's just a nice, nice, comfortable place to to get an interview, to get a soundbite, to get whatever you want. And then I also wanted to provide an opportunity for people that aren't content creators. Um, it does help with the win for sure. I, it almost blew away actually when I was doing a couple of the interviews. So it's, it'll be interesting to see how that turned out. But um, I think, I think it was more, I think it was part that giving a space for creators that attend the event to actually take advantage of the event and get content from these people that they're in person with. Tim is a beast. Kyle says Tim's a beast, man. He is, uh, he is fantastic. <clears throat> but um, I also wanted to give maybe attendees that have a a a, 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 um, a favorite presenter. Say so, Angry American was there uh, this year. Chris is a fantastic guy. I got to talk to him a couple times. Uh, so down to earth, and uh, and what a just a man. If you if you if you sat down next to the guy in the bar it would just be a natural conversation, which was fantastic. So um, we, so with him being one of the headliners, maybe one of his fans is there. Maybe one of his fans would, it would make their year to sit down and ask the man questions for 10 minutes. Maybe they don't have a podcast. Maybe they don't have a YouTube channel. Maybe they don't have uh, social media or anything like that. They're just a fan of one of the presenters and to give them an opportunity to, to chat with them for 10 minutes, um, record it or not, uh, but interview them, get some, get some, uh, that's a memory forever. That's, uh, that's, I think that would be a, a memory that, uh, you could take away whether it's a content creator 10 or not. I think, uh, I think that's a cool opportunity to have. I don't know how many people would take advantage of it. I don't know how many people that interest, but um, man, I can, before I was doing this stuff, if I had, um, if I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with some of my, I guess, I don't want to say idols, but um, people I was fans of, um, music acts, athletes, whatever, um, yeah, I think that would be a cool opportunity. And then the content creators too, grabbing that fantastic co content. If you were a new content creator and you were able to bang out a 10 minute interview with Angry American and throw that on your channel, I think I think that's a, a leg up for anybody that gets that chance. So I appreciate that, Jen. Jen says that's a great idea. I I mean, that's the ones I try to have. They don't always they don't always shit out of my brain like they should, but uh, yeah, that one was there, I think. Uh, Pickle Pete says he was clearing pan, clearing, I'm guessing, say, clearing the land yesterday till dark. The space is coming along. Found eight giant agates. Nice. Um, Backwoods book Butcher says all of my adoring fans can see me in the fall. I threw up in my mouth a little bit with that one. Uh, so that was the content creator tent. I, I would say that it was a, a break even. <laughs> it wasn't a it wasn't a failure. Um, there were moving parts that didn't move. Uh, there were things that uh, that needed adjusting on the fly, and uh, but we did make use of it the best we could for how it went. So that was cool. Uh, I got to check out a new, um, a company sent me out a really nice set of lavalier mics, uh, Bluetooth wireless lavalier mics. I haven't listened to the audio yet, but they were super easy to use, uh, super easy to hook up. And they're, they're really high end. And I was, I was, um, I was shocked actually that uh, the company reached out to me and, and wanted to send some out. But I was able to uh, I was able to use those for all the interviews. So I'll see how the, the the volume turns out and really start dialing in. I hope I didn't butcher all the all the content I got for SRF. <laughs> I shouldn't be touting that I got all these interviews and uh, stuff for them to use 
because I haven't listened to the audio whatsoever. And it was a brand new mic set. So I got it on Friday before. I didn't have a lot of time to mess around with it or test with it. I just, I was like, roll with it. Let's see. So that was great. Um, let's see what else. I, uh, I made some really cool connections uh, this time and saw some really cool products. So, man, I don't want to, I don't want to forget anybody, but I, I just want to touch on a, a couple people. I, if I don't mention your name, it's not that I didn't value the interaction with you um, for sure. I just, I jotted some things down as I was falling asleep last night. Uh, some things that really stuck out. One was uh, sharing the tent with Tim. Uh, again, we had a lots project, a tool man, Tim collaboration last, last time, uh, Pip was there back with there. It was just Tim and I, uh, but the Canadians, uh, the Canadians multiplied like, uh, like they may, they do. And, uh, Tim was there, Becky was there, which was fantastic. I'll talk about that in just a second. And, uh, Tim's daughters were there, his, uh, his twin daughters, his youngest and, um, got to meet them. They were super cool. I really, uh, I really had a, got a kick hanging out with them. Uh, man, what great girls! Just great, great young girls, uh, young ladies, uh, mature young ladies. I think they're what a 13, 14, Corey, 14 years old, 14 years old. And uh, man, really, really mature beyond that. Tim's done a great job. Tim and Becky have done a great job with them. They're, uh, they're going to be rock stars, both of them. But they brought down a bunch of Canadian treats, uh, candy, chips, and other assorted goods that you can't get in the U.S. And, uh, man, they did a stroke of business. I think Becky said on their live stream last night that they pushed 500 bucks or something. They sold $500 worth of Canadian junk. <laughs> Canadian Canadian junk food. And I was like, atta girls, atta girls, way to go. Your dad's tool man, Tim, for sure. And Becky, for Becky too. Becky, by the way, uh, did her first presentation that she's ever done at a festival or a event or a workshop or anything like that. She, uh, man, she got up on stage. She knocked it out of the park. She bared her soul pretty much, um, told a lot of personal stuff uh, about her past and how she got to where she is and how she became the person she is. And uh, she just she's she's on fire with what she's growing she is um she's building a daycare empire basically uh on their trip down when becky was flying down with the girls they uh they actually opened their third daycare um started from a basement or a church basement and uh, is now a uh, man she's a daycare mogul and uh, it, it not slowing down anytime soon so that was cool um mm. Jen G says, did they have nibs? No, they, I don't think they had any nibs. Um, you said you, you would have bought the whole inventory of nibs if they had them. The Somebody bought, so they had, a, it was an all, dre, was it all dressing? All dressing flavored chips. And they were, uh, they were unpacking. This is Saturday morning. They're unpacking their stuff. Uh, I don't even think the festival is actually technically going yet. And uh, they're just touting these all dressing chips. These are the most fantastic potato chips in the world. Blah, 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 blah. Corey's getting all excited about it. And they put a bag up on the thing. And some guy walks by. He goes, you got any all, all season chip or all dressing chips? And they're like, yeah. He's like, I'll take all of them. And they're like, huh? He's like, I'll, I'll take all of them. How many you got? I'll buy them. And walked away with all the chips they had been touting the flavor of these things and uh, just just rolled with them walked away done Corey didn't even get a chance to taste them <laughs> i was like yeah they must be good they must be good but i also got to interview becky uh that was really cool becky cook uh first first interview that she did uh she's she's never done an interview she's never been asked to be interviewed and man i i was impressed um i was impressed by her uh, presentation. I was impressed by the feedback I heard about her presentation. People that didn't know that I knew her or I talked to her, or I sit in the same booth with her. I was just talking to people uh, randomly, kind of getting a vibe for the content creator tent. And um, yeah, they mentioned her. They mentioned her. It was uh, pretty inspirational. Uh, she got a lot of great feedback about it. And man, I grabbed her to do a little interview. And uh, man, I think 
I don't know. I think she might she might have a little bit of the bug that she might want to try to do it a little bit more. I don't know. If she doesn't, she she uh she would did a one and done and uh and and totally successful bat in a thousand. So I was proud of her and uh and happy that she got to do that and was uh was happy with her delivery, was happy with her her performance, and then that I got to interview her and I got first, guys. I got first. So when she is uh when she is uh, a huge famous star even more than she is now, I'll have the first recorded interview with the Becky Cook and I'll hold on to it. So there is that. Um other people there, our next door neighbor was a really interesting dude uh in the vendor tents. Uh he invented a product in his retirement uh that basically if I wanted to to, to describe it, uh I would call it a crock pot that doesn't need electricity or propane or anything like that basically you it's um it's kind of like a a heating stone you heat this stone up and then you put it in this insulated um, gizmo that looks like a crock pot and then there's a cooking pot that sits on top of it and it seals up um and then the radiant heat from the stone cooks the the stuff in the in the pot inside he he came up with it after um uh, after covid hit and they were at the store he had he had developed it he had actually thought about it in his early 20s and developed one had a crude model and then when he went back and covid hit and he was in and he's retired so this was like 40 years ago that he came up with this thing <coughs> and then covid hit and he was like trying to figure out how to be more prepared and his wife was like hey dummy remember that thing you made when you were 24 take a look at that so older wiser more business acclimate and more money he was able to get a better prototype his son uh his son is in online marketing or something and they rolled the product out i think they sold like two million dollars worth of the product last year it's called rocket pot i believe rocket pot rock pot rock pot i want to say rocket pot but it's rock pot uh so he was really cool he's an interesting dude to be next to his wife uh his wife and him are basically traveling around the country promoting these at, at prepper prepper festivals in their retirement they bought a they bought a motor home they were like parked in the parking lot and uh they seemed so happy uh she was super nice they they cooked phenomenal food next to us all day uh all day every day uh, we smelled it. it. Man, the thing works. The thing works for sure. Um, and no, no electricity, no propane. Like if you have a propane burner, you can use that. You can put it in your oven. You can put it on your stovetop. But you could also build a campfire and throw it in there. And if you didn't have a grate, you didn't have. Um, if you didn't have like a cast iron set, something like that, you could still cook. Um, another, another cool uh, vendor tent I hung out at quite a bit was. Um, Sean, Sean, uh, and Glenn, Sean, Gl oh, I'll start with Glenn. Glenn is from Landstruck. Uh, Landstruck is a owner financed, uh, owner financed property developer, I guess. Um, I don't want to say he's a developer. Basically he buys big pieces of land, cuts them up and owner finances them to people like me, like me or Tim or, or, uh, countless other people that are looking to escape and get on some undeveloped property um, and don't want to go through the banks or can't go through the banks. Uh, basically, their credit check is a background check and no credit check. So that's cool. Uh, got to talk to him. But man, the beyond the land, um, the rest of the vendor booth in their little in their booth uh, really, really piqued my interest more. Uh, the guy that was with him, kind of a partner or a co. Um, all dressed chips canadian farmstead thank you uh from north of the border i appreciate that all dressed chips not all dressing chips <laughs> us stupid americans don't know what they call stuff up there but uh the other guy that was with him uh kind of a representative um he helps him with uh video editing things like that was this dude named sean i had um i had heard of this guy I was actually following his YouTube channel. I had I had connected with him a little bit through Carrie Brown, a uh, strong resources who was there. I was uh, always excited to spend some time with Carrie. 
Um, but Kerry had had kind of turned me on to this guy because he works with him. He's he's kind of close to Kerry over there, about an hour outside of Knoxville. But him and his wife are are building a homestead on um, on some raw property. He's got a YouTube channel that's pretty successful. He's got a TikTok channel that's pretty successful. Uh, off grid and growing. If you know him, you heard of him. If you haven't, check out their stuff. Follow them. They're uh, they're here in Tennessee doing some off grid project, and they're uh, they're more of a genuine YouTuber, uh, kind of my speed where they don't just show the good stuff. And they don't just show the good stuff. They're they're pretty straightforward and honest. Uh, they're very good at video production. Uh, they moved from L.A. out to Tennessee. And um, really nice guy. Really nice guy. I really enjoyed talking to him um, and followed his channel. We'll probably do some, some collaboration, things like that. <laughs> Chris Dixon says, Chris Dixon says, we literally put the name right on the bag. It's even in English sometimes. Yeah. The problem is they sold out before I even saw the bag. I don't, I don't even know what these things are. Like, I don't know what, uh, what all dressed means. I don't mean like I'm a, I'm more of a fan of uh, scantily clad or partially dressed uh, myself, especially women or potato chips. Um, good morning, Chris, by the way, thank you for stopping in, man. Those trucks were beautiful that, uh, that you were showing this weekend, showing or selling. I think I, I think I saw that they were selling. Uh, was that the auction or just a show that you were at? Anyway, back to Sean at off grid and growing. I uh, got to talk with him. We'll probably be doing some collaborations, uh, with him or hopefully maybe taking a trip out to see his place at some point. Uh, but him and his wife, Jess are out here off grid and growing on YouTube, um, off grid, Sean, I believe on TikTok. uh, just really good guy, really good guy. Uh, but they had this really thing, this thing there that I was, I was super interested in. It's a prototype project product. And Brian might be talking to them today about how much I love this product, but, um, he's like, Hey man. I was like, what do you got in the case there? He had a little Pelican case on the desk. I was like, what do you got in the case? He's like, oh, this is uh this is the thing we're using. This is the thing we're working on right now as a new product to go as a as a supplemental product with the landstruck business. And I'm like, okay, what is it? Like um, you know, like property evaluator, something like that. He goes, Oh no, man, this is a uh this is a text snapshot of the internet offline running a uh, an open source version of an ai a generative ai i'm like huh really and so he flips it around so the pelican case opens up and there's a screen in the front there's a raspberry pi in it there is a keyboard in the pelican case and basically it's an offline version of the internet and he's like okay so uh let's um Let's say the grid's down, uh, the internet's turned, the internet got turned off. Um, this is an updatable through SD, SD card text snapshot of the internet whenever you take it. And uh, you can interact with it similar to chat GPT. Um, it's slower, obviously. It's not, it doesn't have the power of like open AI behind it or anything like that. But the information's there and the search was good. Uh, we did some testing on it. He did like, oh, the, the grid is down and we're needing to filter water. What are 10 ways that you can that you can filter water to make it safe to drink? And it took a little longer than it would on a would on a like a chat GPT. But it said <coughs> it said um, it um, it spit it out. It gave you, it gave us 10, 10 ways to, um, filter water. We also were thinking that it'd be a, a fantastic option. If, um, maybe there was some stuff that you wanted to search that you didn't want open AI bouncing around and, uh, collecting your data and, and maybe sharing with people you don't want to share with what you've been searching about. Um, <laughs> Hunter says he can't wait to have something in a Pelican case. Um, yeah, but the this thing was pretty fantastic. It also had a, an FM receiver in it. 
uh, where you could dial in and search the FM bands for uh, broadcast messages. It, if it picks something up, it would store them. You could repeat them. And uh, I believe he said you might be able to put a message out uh, at some point. It's still in development. It's not available yet. But, uh, man, I'm, I'm excited to... Uh, to maybe pick one up or uh, or work with them in the future and uh, and see what I can do with this thing. They also sat down and um, and asked it to uh, teach Glenn how to win arguments with his wife. That was pretty funny. It's pretty funny. It gave him a gave him a twenty step uh, twenty step process for winning ar arguments with his wife, and it was pretty funny. Uh, so that was cool. I was I was excited to hang out with those guys, man. Uh, a bunch of other people. I'm looking at the time here, uh, and I, it, man, I could go for four hours if I talked all talked about all the people I interacted with. But that is uh, that is the main goal of uh, SRF for me at this point. Uh, I saw, man, I would probably say <laughs> Chris Dixon says twenty step apology list. I mean, but like literally, it did. It was like apologize then bring up a counterpoint stuff like that and i was like oh man this thing isn't that dumb <laughs> it might be a woman this chap gpt thing might be actually be a woman um that's my mo at, at srf anymore is the the community building the connection building talking to people uh, i think i probably saw a total of two hours of presentation maybe the whole weekend uh, tool man, Tim, I always try to catch Becky. I got a, uh, um, uh, earshot of John Willis, uh, always got to walk by and, and get a little shot in the ass from John Willis and, um, uh, and, and get moving. Uh, I actually got wrangled in to ask a question because, uh, the line had gotten small and John will just leave. Uh, if nobody's there to ask him any questions, he has better things to do. And I understand that. Uh, and so I was wrangled in to go up and ask him a question. And man, I, I even, I tossed him a softball question uh, just because I, I literally had about 45 seconds while I was walking up to the microphone to come up with a question for him. And I didn't know, I was like, well, I have no idea. So I was just asking general questions about starting social media and through a little banter, um, while I was waiting for other people to show up to ask questions, it, uh, it turned into something I learned. I learned, um, in that few minutes randomly, it was, it was pretty nice. Something I could take away from that. Uh, and man, John, I can't say enough about John and Amanda. Um, not just because of SRF, uh, they, they host it. They allow all of us to come to their property, uh, basically shut down his business for four days and, and, um, and look at all his stuff and be all up in his stuff. And that, that's unbelievable to begin with. And, and I appreciate that. He's always welcoming, always a smile on his face, always willing to stop and talk. Both of them, uh, not just John, but John and Amanda, they're just fantastic people. Uh, you might think he's an asshole, uh, man. He's just, he's just direct. He's honest. He's going to tell you what you, what he thinks and he doesn't care if you like him or not. So if you can't deal with that, it is what it is. Uh, I, I, I kind of prefer it, <laughs> but, uh, beyond that on a personal side, um, and went the extra mile to, uh, make some stuff right for Corey. It wasn't wrong yet. It, it wasn't wrong by any means, but, uh, Corey's been, Corey's been dreaming about a product from John uh, that she wanted from the first time we went to SRF. And we were talking about it this morning. I think it was probably three years ago that, um, that she saw it and she wanted it. And finally it was in stock before Christmas, this Christmas. Uh, her mom ordered it for her in November. John rarely makes this product. <coughs> we knew it was probably going to be a really long time. In the process of waiting for the process to show up, or the product to show up, or a couple products to show up, um, Corey realized that her mom had had entered the wrong address, and she was worried that maybe it got shipped somewhere else. And so she reached out, she reached out to John, and John's busy. John doesn't do a lot of customer service. Um, it was through the website. It appears that he got it. It appears that he got it, but we weren't worried about it. We knew we were going to SRF. 
when we got there, Corey talked to Amanda. Amanda basically said, "This is how this is how you get a hold of me. Send me a message. I'll take care of it." Um, and we're like, "Okay, well, it's the festival, so we'll we'll do it at night or whatever, and it'll probably get taken care of this week." We sent Amanda a message that night, and um, man, it's at it, man, it was like six six thirty in the morning. I get a message back from her. It's all been taken care of before the festival on Sunday. She was up doing orders and work and and all of that and and took the time to rectify that situation. And that was fantastic. We were all excited. We uh, we knew that it was going to show up at the right address, that it hadn't shipped yet, that it was actually going to ship soon. Um, and that was great. We were very satisfied. Corey was excited. She was happy. She was going to get her bag. We went to the event on Sunday. We were walking around. We were enjoying ourselves. At, and Corey uh, traditionally gets a picture with all the people that she she meets and hangs out with she gets a selfie with them and she hadn't taken many pictures and she was running around she was taking those and at, right at, towards the end of the event um after john had spoke in a round table he was he was standing outside the tent talking to some people and Corey wanted to go get her picture with him uh he was probably the last one that she needed uh to to have a picture with everybody from the event and so she went over and she said hey john can i get a picture with you and he's like oh yeah of course and um i mean we have interacted with him he and Corey and i together and separate are pretty recognizable uh the bald chick and uh and me and and Corey rides a unicycle and john thinks that's fantastic and so he he knows her he's like oh absolutely absolutely for sure and so he's taking a picture and um Pip says, is there a selfie bingo? Maybe there should be. Maybe there should be. Um, and uh, anyway, John looks at her. And he says, hey, are you having some trouble with an order? And Corey's like, yeah. Um, but Amanda took care of it. He's like, well, what was it? What was the order? And she, she's like, well, it was a, a mini, a mini day pack. That was Corey's, uh, that was Corey's unicorn, by the way, a mini day pack from John from SOE. And he's like, well, what color was it in? And Corey's like, oh, I'll look it up. And so she looks it up and he's like, well, we have one of those in stock. And she's like, yeah, I know. I saw one inside. <laughs> well, she didn't say that. He's like, we got one in stock. Let's go get it. We'll take care of it. So he took the time to walk into the factory and grab the bag and give it to Corey and then proceeded to, to let Amanda know that she needs to cancel the, to, to, to refund the shipping and not ship it out. <laughs> Hands her a tablet. Yeah, take care of this, would you? Um, so that was cool. Corey thought that was fantastic that she, uh, she was able to receive this, this bag that she's been, uh, she's been dreaming about for three years, uh, and had John personally just go get it, hand it to her. So that was, that was a highlight of, uh, of her weekend. I have to say the smile on her face when she got her bag, uh, she's on cloud nine. I, I feel so good for, her. um, yeah, she's wanted it for a long time. You want something for that long and you get it. It's um, and get it in that fashion. I think that's really cool. So she got her mini day pack and she's uh, she's all set now. And now I can start uh, populating my SOE collection. Uh, we talked about that this weekend. Yeah, uh, man, it was a it was a whirlwind. Um, Sonny Pulaski, I believe, is how you pronounce his last name. That dude is. Um, dangerous let's say uh, i look at the dude and i'm like he could kill me probably by not even touching me somehow um xkgb uh and now he is one of the top um self-defense and martial arts and and um violence instructors uh his his youtube handle or his uh, uh facebook or his handle online is gospel of violence so there is that he did a he did a talk on my on de-escalation um mike home says i should have gone to get my belt been nearly four months what size is it mike i saw the belts on the shelf and there were very very few uh in stock uh, a few 32s a 34, a 36, and like a bunch of 46s. There weren't very many belts on the shelf, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> um, so yeah, Sonny, he was an interesting dude. Um it, yeah, it was so it was so cool. It was so cool. And um 
like I said, Angry American, Nicole, always good to see Nicole, John, Amanda, and and the whole bunch and hang out with Tim for the weekend. Guys, if you want to go to Fall SRF, and I got a couple things to hit up here before we take off, so I uh, I think I might go just a little bit long. But if you guys want to go to SRF in the fall, October 4th and 5th, I believe, are the dates. Uh, man, it's 180 days, 179 days away. It's in Camden, Tennessee. If you can't in six months, if you want to go, if you think that sounds good and you really want to go, not like, oh, oh, I'd like to go to that. Like, I want to go to that event. And you really want to go. You got 180 days to figure it out. You got you got 180 days to figure it out. And it is uh, it is worth the money. Right now, there's going to be early bird tickets. I think uh, if you're listening to this live, there's actually an eclipse sale <laughs> uh, through today or through the end of the eclipse or something like that. I don't know what uh, what the promo code is or anything. I just heard it mentioned. Um, but um, I, if you want to go, you can go. There's no excuse that you can't come up with the money, the funds, and the the arrangements to make it six months from now it's when it comes to august and you're in or september it's like well it's only three or four weeks away and i really want to go here's your fair warning if you really want to go the link is in the video description in the chat in the everywhere grab a ticket now and make it happen oh wait that was atwood rope link <laughs> that is not the srf link guys hold on a second <laughs> i uh srf link is in the video description and it'll be in the chat in just a second but pick up a ticket to uh pick up a ticket to srf i'll be there a bunch of people kyle's going to be there uh pip is going to be there and uh so many more so many more we'll probably talk a little bit about srf here and there throughout the week um as i as i kind of process what went on and i get a little bit more notes down but i wanted to hit a couple other things here before we take off i won't go too long I won't go too long by uh, any means. Oh, Mike's home says that 34 Cobra black. All he had was green. All he had was the uh, OG green or, or whatever that uh, he call it, whatever that is in his color scheme. I, I know it as OG green, uh, but yeah, uh, very limited stock on the shelves there for the belts, which happens. So Mike's Mike's homestead says he'll be uh, he'll, he'll he's sure he'll be there in the fall. Uh, another cool thing happened, um, not related to SRF this weekend. Uh, I I don't know if I mentioned it. I think I have. I started messing around with uh, TikTok, TikTok some more, uh, and and namely TikTok affiliates. Basically, similar to Amazon program I'm in, you can make um, you can make content for products uh and tag the products and if people click on the click on the link and buy it you're in a commission pretty straightforward um it's a, it's not as straightforward as it seems there's a lot of uh nuances and intricacies and uh loopholes and and pitfalls and so i've been slow rolling into it kind of uh really making sure i got my ducks in a row before i i try to do that and make it worth the time so I've been dabbling a little bit here and there with making videos. Nothing that I thought was going to be good. I'm, I'm trying to feel out what the best way to do it is. And so I posted a video the other day. It was a product that we had. Corey's had it for, uh, I think we've had it for, for three or four years at least. Basically, it's a jump drive for an iPhone uh, that's got the lightning port. It's got a USB-C port uh, and uh, a USB-A port. And basically, you can plug it into a phone, download pictures, documents, whatever, phone dump it, and then either keep it on the stick or transfer it to any device, computer, laptop, external hard drive, another phone, blah, blah, blah. Use it as a, as a secondary drive. If you want to store some stuff on that, plug it in and access it. You can access it directly from it. Pretty cool product. And I was like, just searching through the product marketplace. And there it was. I was like, oh, I love this thing. I can make a video about that. So I made a stupid little, I didn't even say anything. It was just basically a, a walkthrough of all the different ports on it. I, I opened it up and it was, uh, I put some stuff on the screen and posted it and tagged the product. I, after that, I got a, a message. It only had like 300 views on it, which is kind of, uh, 
kind of the standard. Um, if I don't have it go really good, I kind of hit that 300 views. The company messaged me and said, Hey, um, can I get the ad code for your, for your, for your video? And basically TikTok has a, has a mechanism set up where you can share an ad code with a, 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 a company and then they can run ads, put money towards your video to promote it. And then by promoting it, you get more views, you get more clicks, you get more sales. I said, hey, can I get your ad code? We want to run uh, run some ads on this. And uh, if you're interested, we have another product that uh, we just came out with and we'd love to send it out to you and, and have you make videos. I'm like, you want to put money behind my video to get more clicks and uh, which means you're going to pay me money when I get a click and a sale? Sure, cool. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so I figured out the process of doing that. I send it to him. And uh, yeah, it just started getting views. And now it hasn't gone crazy viral or anything. It's a guy that's like up to 5,000 or 6,000 views, which is whatever. It's not, uh, it's, a, it's a drop in the bucket compared to some of these guys for sure. But uh, man, Saturday morning, I, uh, I sat down for a second and I, I reloaded my stats on TikTok and I had made a sale. Eight bucks. I was like, holy shit, eight bucks for that, for that little 30 second video eight bucks. I was happy. It's only eight bucks. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, I was so geeked up. I was so excited. And, um, later that day I got another sale. So I made $17 on Saturday from TikTok, from TikTok, <laughs> from posting a stupid video. And then again, on Sunday, I sold one. I was like, this is pretty cool. Now, I, now I've made like 25 bucks off of uh, this video and it's continuing to go up because he's going to continue to pump money onto it. He's going to continue to promote it. And I'm like, this is, this is like, um, this is a viable thing. Now it is totally a lottery crapshoot. Um, you can make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars an hour, or you can make eight bucks a day. So I'm not, I'm not looking at this like it's a home run by any means, but it is kind of exciting to uh, to make that first sale, to know that it actually works, that it actually people do click through and you do get your commissions. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to start dedicating a little bit more time to it. We've rolled into Q2. I've kind of moved into a phase of my Amazon influencer program that I want to start doing a weekly live. That's what I'm going to add on to that. I'm going to continue uh, plugging away at up, uh, approximately five uh, five product videos a week. I'm going to add in a Sunday live to uh, to make that um, to make that happen, and then I'm going to start dabbling in TikTok. I got some cool products. Some companies have sent some products out to me that are uh, on TikTok only, and also some um, also some that are on TikTok and you and Amazon, which are the what I'm really going to target. So I can have one product, one filming or two filming sessions and make a bunch of different content from different platforms. And hopefully all those revenue streams kind of roll into one and make the, the mighty Mississippi or something. So that's cool. I'm excited about that. And um, Amazon Influencers is going well. I just checked my stats this morning and uh, 14th consecutive week of growth. Woo-woo! Still not where I want it, but growth, positive growth is definitely um, definitely a good sign. I'm excited to keep going with that. So that was the little TikTok update I wanted. And um, guys, uh, uh, I didn't have a whole lot to say about the eclipse. We'll probably talk about it tomorrow if the world doesn't end. I hope everybody is safe. I hope everybody, I hope it goes well. I I, I don't have any uh, illusions that this is going to be the end of the world. I am, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think, believe many of the things we've joked about over the weeks on, on Fridays, on the TikTok shows or anything like that. Uh, but man, if something does go sideways, I appreciate all you guys that have uh, hung out and, uh, and continue to hang out all the time every morning. And, um, and, uh, and, and laugh and have a good time. It, it, it's, uh, it's as much for you guys as it is, um, is for me. Hunter says, wait, y'all were joking. 
I actually have uh, been invited to an eclipse party. My my friends got back from four months away here locally, and uh, they reached out. They're having an eclipse potluck, and Corey and I are going to go hang out and, and catch up with our friends that we haven't seen for four months, which is really fun. Um, and this will be my first eclipse party. <laughs> I was I was like, oh, cool. I uh, I hadn't even thought about that, but uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, man, if the earth shakes and the giants wake up and the, the new Madrid fall opens up and I fall in, guys, I, I've enjoyed this shit. And if it doesn't, I'm going to show up tomorrow and we're going to do it again. I'm going to enjoy it. And I hope all you do, too. I hope everybody's safe. I hope you get to see the eclipse. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of clouds, rain and crap. Shocker. Let's uh, let's talk about it all tomorrow and uh, and sort it all out. See how everybody's uh, experiences went. Dixon says, I'll just catch the next one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Hunter says, if the world goes to shit and I can't see it, man, that would suck. Yeah, it looked like Chris Chris Dixon posted. I think it was Chris Dixon posted uh, the weather forecast for the for the maybe it wasn't Chris. Somebody I was only on Telegram uh, spot hit and miss all weekend with SRF. But somebody had the the weather forecast for uh, the eclipse, and it was just a line of clouds on the path of totality. And that's basically what it's lining up to look like. So, hmm. We'll talk about it all tomorrow, guys. But, yeah, I appreciate y'all. And um, I think I'm going to sign off and uh, pop over and check out uh, Good Morning Seattle with Brian. Uh, Sensei scrambling. Oh, another day. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. I had a few things more on my notes, but I am, uh, I'm cash guys. I'm going to go sit down have a big old pot of coffee and take the dogs for a walk. I appreciate everybody listening. If you enjoy the show, it's always free to hit that like share and subscribe to return value for value. Please consider joining one of the YouTube memberships tiers or listening on any value for value platform like Podverse or fountain.fm. Or catch me over on Noster. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be focusing a little bit more on Noster uh, in Q2. Also, that is on my list for Q2. Otherwise, you can visit thelotsproject.com. Find the shop there. Mugs, T-shirts, and consulting, all sorts of stuff like that. Or the brand new comfreyroots.com, which was getting a bunch of traffic this weekend with a, a on-site SRF code. Guys, check out all the links, check the partner companies, uh, affiliate codes, discount codes, all of that stuff. I appreciate listening. Have a good eclipse day. Make sure you don't fall in any holes that open up and up in the ground. If you see a weird portal or dimensional inner thing, eh, it might be not the right day to go jumping through it. But if you do, let us know how it was. Have an awesome day, guys, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow.